Hey there, what's up people, fair people of MLB DFS land. This is MLB Made Easy. I'm your buddy Chop It On. It is Friday morning. We have ownership already, so I get to do some fun things in front of you with the domination station or with the chalkboard or with our leverage stacking tool or whatever we decide to do on Friday when we give you a sneak peek of some of the other tools here inside DFSArmy.com. Uh, One-stop shopping, all things Daily Fantasy Sports. See the description. Use the coupon code CHOP, C-H-O-P. Get that 10% discount that brings you some savings each and every month. And consider becoming a VIP. While you're in there, why don't you throw a little tip in my jar? Like and subscribe to the video. Maybe throw me a comment. Let's talk. Let's have some fun. Whatever the case may be, my job is to make you a better DFS player. I start by going through a routine every single day, uh, Monday through Friday anyway, where we're going to set a repeatable process, something that you can count on, something that's going to trim the fat off the slate, if you will. Target good pitchers, target good stacks, and target hot hitters. You can then take those into any optimizer that you choose, and you can boost their projections, or you can key on those certain guys, use minimum or maximum uh, you know, exposure limits, whatever the case may be, to start getting that machine to tell your story. Because telling your story is what's going to make you a better Player, instead of just playing whatever the machine spits out and being a little button clicker, you need to make slight tweaks that kind of stay on the right track but get slightly off that track in hopes that your way is the right way. That's how you win in DFS. It is no longer a game of projections. It helps, but it is more a game of knowing what to do with those projections, knowing how to exploit what the public is doing with those projections. And newsflash, the public is lazy. And when the public is lazy, they tend to just button click. And if you know what buttons are clicking or what the machine is producing when they just click those buttons, you can make slight pivots that have equal chances of producing at lower ownerships, which is actually going to give you better winning chances. That's simple. We talk about that. We lay that out in video format, in chat format, in whatever format it helps you absorb the information inside our DFS Army program. Let me show you the routine, then we'll dive into some of the other tools. So the first thing that I'm going to do is I always start with the FanDuel Pitchers tab here. And DraftKings, same diff. The stats don't change, right? And I sort the chop shop by largest to smallest, and I bring the big numbers to the top. And I see that Carlos Rodon is up there, right? Way up there. 150 points clear of everybody else in K-score. That's a big, big, big advantage. We don't see that very often. I would key on him. I would say he's absolutely my favorite pitcher of the slate just on potential alone, especially in tournaments. I would expect he's going to be rather chalky tonight because, again, this one little metric shows you how much better than the rest of the field he might be. Cannon, Goslin, Kikuchi, Dunning, whatever. These other guys are filtering in there a little bit, but do you trust any of them anymore? Probably not. The problem is you might take a chance on some of these guys at much, much cheaper prices but you are giving up a lot. You're sacrificing a lot of strikeout potential on the average night. You're hoping to kind of catch lightning in a bottle. You might just roll Carlos Rodon tonight and just take what you get, okay? He's very expensive. That part sucks. There's no doubt about that. But in a cash game, you're probably doing this. In tournaments, maybe you throw a little bit of a percentage away from it and maybe take some shots on some other guys. Um, somebody that would be, you know, it, it, imagining the field really likes him and really likes the other direction, which would be, well, if I'm if they're going super high price, I'll go super low price. I've got some potential in Canning and, you know, Gonsolin and Kikuchi or whatever. Kikuchi's not exactly low price, but Dunning, whatever, right? What that's going to do is it's going to send the field in two different directions sometimes. Sometimes they're all going high or low, in which case you go slightly low. Valdez might be the forgotten man, you know? Uh, Kikuchi might be the forgotten man. So, these are scenarios where those guys make sense in tournaments because you still get the same build of bats that everybody else gets because you're not that much under in price point on the salary. But, you know, you got to have Radon fail and you got to have Kikuchi go off for that to work. I don't know how you feel about that, about taking that gamble. But if you're trying to win a nickel tournament and be the perfect lineup over 130, 150,000 people, you're going to have to take some chances like that, definitely, to make that happen. Now, that said, we're going to look for stacks and who we like in our stacking scenarios. And we do that by going largest to smallest on the W score. W score, in, in the description, I do K score and W score in a bonus video explained to everybody. So if you have those questions, dive in there and, re, and, and watch that video. But now Matt Harvey jumps to the top. He's going to get thumped. He typically does. 
Jake Arietta, Manoa, Crow, Crow, whatever, Cueto, Lester. Cueto's interesting. Lester, Smiley. These are the guys that you should be stacking against. Over 500 for K score is a good number. I'm starting to think that over 650 and W score is a good number. And these are loose targets. Again, we're taking what the slate gives us. But if I only had 657 and 660 as my top numbers, and these were guys I was targeting, I'm not going to be as excited to stack against that as I am a 700 or a 732, right? They're cheap for a reason. I probably carry high home run per nines. So when I scroll over here and look at who I would be stacking against down to about this general area, so Toronto, Dodgers, Baltimore, St. Louis, Oakland, Minnesota, Miami, I'm sorry, uh, Cincinnati, Chicago, et cetera. Where's Houston? Houston's way down here with uh, Wiley Peralta. That's really interesting. Wiley Peralta, pretty, pretty red across. This is interesting for Houston. Uh, Houston might not be that chalky tonight. I don't know. I, I would suspect they would be, but I would say those numbers on Wiley Peralta might suggest that it might be. A, I don't know. It'd be worth digging into and seeing and see, doing some research and saying, why? Why is that number so low for Wiley Peralta? I don't think of him as a great pitcher, but why is that number so low? Can he actually shut down that Houston offense? Because Houston's been rolling lately, and if Houston goes over-owned, then you can get off of them or take far less exposure to them and maybe dodge a bullet. I don't know. These are things. This is what you use these tools for. This is how you kind of sift through the information as you're thinking about a slate and doing some research. It gives you things to look at. You've got to be able to ask yourself, huh, that looks weird. Why? Why is that standing out? Why is that looking so different? And that's where your research goes. That's where you start directing your research. If I go into the hitting trends tab and identify those hot hitters today, I sorted the seven day Wobas, not by 400, but by 440. Why? Huge slate. Huge slate. The cream is going to be at the very, very top. And we can, now, it doesn't mean a 420 is bad or a 400 is bad. You want to include those guys too. But we can't go adoring everybody in these optimizers, giving them three thumbs up or giving them boosts or whatever. We can't go do that for everybody. Otherwise, it waters down the basic overall projections that we actually know from algorithms and sporting models and things we know are actually pretty good. So all I really want to do is enhance what I think should be pulled forward. And that list is about 20 to 40 names of bats. It's not a hard number, but 20 to 40 names. And so I'm going to thin that field down using these filters in these WOBA trends and ISO trends to get that. And I went 440 in WOBA and 250 in ISO. And that finally cut this list down to, I don't know, 20 to 30 names or so. These are the people that I would then boost in the projections. Now, if the projections like somebody who's hitting a 410 Wobo over the last seven days, fine. I will let him in my lineups, no doubt about it. But I've got a Baltimore, a Boston, Chicago, Cincinnati, Cleveland, Detroit. See, onesies, two Houston guys, which is interesting because when we were at 400 and 200 instead of 440 and 250, there were a lot of Houston guys, right? So you still want to include lots of these guys if you think they're going to be performing tonight. Uh, LA, Miami, Minnesota, New York, Oakland, it doesn't look like many people. Oh, San Diego's got four dudes over 440 and 250. That's huge. If Corbin Martin is somebody that you want to attack, these are the bats to be doing it with for sure. Uh, San Francisco, Tampa Bay, Toronto is interesting because they've been playing well lately too. And there's only one guy that makes this list. The others are probably just slightly under the radar. If you want to loosen that up a little bit and maybe pull three, four, five names off those teams into those stacks, then you would loosen up the WOBA requirements or the ISO requirements a little bit compared to the filter that I just put in there. And from there, you can then key on those teams that you like tonight, if you like Toronto or you like Houston or whatever, and then you can open, you kind of expand that list. So you might be ignoring Oakland or Pittsburgh or whatever, but you can expand that list of the teams that you do like and start picking up those members of your stacks, if that makes sense. Uh, one thing I did want to point out is the FanDuel pitchers tab. Uh, I'm sorry, the Pitching Trends tab. This is new to the research station at DFSArmy.com. It shows you K per nine. It shows you how the guy does over the season, over the last 40 days, which is, you know, 10 starts. The last uh, 20 days, which is four or five starts-ish. And then home run trends and ERA trends and all that kind of stuff. And you can use this in a couple of different ways. Number one, you can see Carlos Rodon has been pretty consistent over the year, or, you know, season, 12.8, 13 strikeouts per, per nine innings. He's run a little hot the last 40 days, run a little cold the last 20 days. But nothing out there to really alarm you or get scared about. 
You might look at a Kikuchi and say nine usually, and he's running hot at 10. Okay, maybe you like Kikuchi a little bit more as a pivot tonight. Manaya, same bit. Come down here to a Chris Paddock. Chris Paddock is showing significant uptick. Maybe you like that, right? Look at his home run per nine. It's going down. Look at his ERA per nine. You know, it's going down a little bit. So maybe he's an ascending player, which maybe means he's a little underpriced for how he's been performing lately, and you should maybe key on him in tournaments. That's what these tools point out. I can also look at like the home run per nine and see a guy here like Manoa, 2.6, 2.6, 2.5. He's still up there giving up a lot of bombs. I can also pick up a Johnny Cueto, 1.2 on the year, 1.6 last 40 days, last 20 days has been getting absolutely rocked. Maybe that trend continues and you want to capitalize on that. There's two different ways to look at these trends, ascending players and descending players. Ascending players you might want to use as your pitcher, descending players you might want to stack against, okay? So let's dive in a little bit to the chalkboard and let's talk a little bit about where we might go in a cash game. Rodon carrying tons of ownership on FanDuel. Makes tons of sense, right? Your top K score by a mile. That is should plan, pan out. Who's next though? And it's a significant gap. So in a cash game, Carlos Radon, lock button, end of story. Don't get cute. Lock, lock button. Mike Miner, Paddock. Paddock might be a pivot in tournaments. You know, Mania, whatever. These guys that may show up on that K-square or the home run trends or whatever you're looking at, these guys might show up and, and show positive regression. Something that might continue to trend in that direction might be a good thing. But that's a tournament play. Cash game play, this is a significant gap. You probably won't be using a catcher. If you did, Gary Sanchez isn't bad. Tyler Stevenson for cheap isn't bad, but they're not carrying a lot of ownership. They don't insulate you a lot. I like using these as blocks. I like going all the way down the list to where between me and you in a head-to-head -head battle, there's only maybe one or two differences in our lineups, and I feel like I can make at the bottom of my list, I can make those two decisions sharper than you can over time, and that's what's going to win my cash games for me. But I like to block you everywhere else I possibly can by taking high ownership players. It makes me very, very, very hard to beat. I don't win all the time, and I'm not the best cash game player in the world, but I'm hard to beat. I'm not dead money. I have a punch, a fighter's punching chance every time I line up a lineup and, and roster some players, okay? Freddie Freeman, again, chalky, but this isn't so much of a gap that you wouldn't consider a Luke Voigt. He's also cash viable. Chavis might be going down a little bit too far. Monty Guerrero certainly are. These make good tournament or league type pivots if you're trying to win a 20 man or a 100 man or something like that. Marcus Simeon, that's a fairly significant gap. And then there's a whole bunch of guys clustered up in second, third, and fourth. So I would probably give weight to Marcus Simeon. But right now, uh, Freeman and Voigt, Simeon, whatever. Right now, the only lock I see is Carlos Rodon. This is, there's no gap here to speak of. Riley and Ramirez are your third base choices for cash. Shortstop, a little bit of a gap. Simeon again. If you use Simeon up there at second base, then you're looking at Swanson and then a gap down to the others. So you might use a Simeon and a Swanson. You get a Simeon up here. If it gets you, if you like Albies better, use him. But Simeon and Swanson together might make more sense than, you know, trying to take Simeon at shortstop and then have to choose among, yeah, maybe you could use an Albies. I don't know. That's going to come to you. They're all probably all viable moves. But again, nothing too significant that requires a lock. You've got two or three options at each position. You've got Acuna probably in the outfield if he plays tonight. Aquino is a good value play. Carlson is an okay value play. I'd game log hunt him, to be honest with you, and make sure that he's hitting the best. St. Louis' offense has been wicked cold. Tyler O'Neill, same deal, same deal. Randall Gritchick's a boomer bust type of player. Uh, I don't know that I'd use him in a cash game, but I might if the ownership dictates. Kyle Tucker I'd probably use before those guys. Uh, Aaron Judge, Jordan Alvarez I'd use before those guys. Tasker Hernandez I'd use before those guys. Um, so I'm in the same ownership ranges of these guys, but I'd probably have to use an Acuna if I can afford him. I would certainly use an Aquino would be a lock play. So Marcus Simeon, Aquino, Carlos Rodon, those are the players that I would really key on. They'd be in all of my cash game lineups probably. And then I would, I would start making pivots from there. I like taking those those players and getting slightly off, you know, we're maybe in a position where I don't take uh, Austin Riley. I take a Jose Ramirez instead, or maybe I take some of these little bit lower owned outfielders, you know, instead of an Acuna or something like that. And that builds me slightly different than everybody else. And that's where I make those one or two pivots different than somebody else. And that's where I tend to separate myself in cash games. 
Hopefully that makes sense to you. If it does, come talk to me inside DFSArmy.com, coupon code CHOP, C-H-O-P. Have a good Friday, and we'll talk to you guys through the weekend. Peace out.